The burger is arguably one of America's most loved foods, but it's changing. For example, take a look at these three burgers over here. Only one of them is actually made from beef. The other two from plant proteins. Can you tell the difference? Welcome to Vital Signs. I'm Dr. Sanjay Gupta. When you look at these burgers, it's this one over here that's actually made from beef. These two from plant proteins. Some of these, these plant protein burgers even have this ingredient added to make them bleed like real meat. They're marketed as being more environmentally friendly, more sustainable, but it does raise all sorts of questions. What exactly is in the food we eat? Does it matter for religious reasons? Does it matter for health reasons? And what is the future of our food? When Beyond Meat went public earlier in May of 2019, it marked another major turning point in the food and health culture in the United States. This followed more than a decade of research and development into burgers made from plants. And not only by Beyond Meat, the goal was a product that could have the protein, nutrients, taste, and mouthfeel of animal meat. Suddenly, an industry known mainly by its devotees emerged from relative obscurity. Springsteen has a great quote. I think it's something around, you know, I, I, sometimes I can't tell the difference between my courage and desperation. That was true for me. It, I was so uncomfortable not doing this that I had to go do it. It's a calling that led Ethan Brown to launch Beyond Meat in 2009. Even before going public, the company amassed a slew of high-profile backers and investors. I've come to the Beyond Meat headquarters in El Segundo, California, to see the substance and the science behind this movement. Today, we're sitting in the Manhattan Beach Project. We wanted to evoke that sense of urgency and scale of the Manhattan Project, the Second World War, at the University of Chicago, where they brought together the very best scientists, the best engineers, and the best managers to solve something that was really important at the time to beat the Germans to the bomb. We have to solve this protein issue uh, if we're going to have a sustainable planet, if we're going to have a healthy population. It's, it's a pretty audacious way of looking at things. You know, 95%, 93% of Americans are consuming uh, animal protein. Um, I don't think that's going to go away. But can we shift the consumer from a animal-based meat to a plant-based meat? Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Right. So about 95% of our employees on the research team came out of biomedical training or biomedical work. And I know they want to be, and I want them to be, that group of people that separates meat from animals. You know, there's pride in that. And so we're working furiously to, to make sure that we deliver that. The growing beef with beef, especially factory farming, is partly because research shows it's severely damaging to the environment. According to the UN, beef alone is responsible for 41% of livestock greenhouse gas emissions, such as methane and nitrous oxide. Those livestock emissions make up 14.5% of total global emissions. In Redwood City, California, Impossible Foods is another U.S. company at the forefront of the plant-based meat revolution. Our mission is very simple. It's to completely replace animals as a food technology by 2035, globally. Pat Brown, a doctor and a former biochemist, founded the company in 2011. Impossible says its products are available at more than 10,000 restaurants in the United States. The Impossible Whopper, only at Burger King. And have also launched in multiple locations in Asia, including Hong Kong, a huge traditional meat-eating market. People are not wedded to the idea that meat has to come from animals. They're very wide of the idea that they got to have meat. But is the Impossible Burger good for you? We make our product as healthy as we can, which isn't to say that you should base your whole diet on giant stacks of Impossible Burgers. It's, it's a healthy component of a healthy, diverse diet. Nutritionist and CNN Health and Nutrition contributor Lisa Dreyer analyzed the three types of burgers, beef, impossible and beyond it's amazing to think that a patty made from peas now exists in the meat section boy have times changed there is no doubt that by eating less meat and focusing more on a plant-based diet you can improve your health and you could contribute to the healthfulness of the planet dreyer also found plant-based meat to be higher in sodium 
with the Impossible Burger containing 370 milligrams of sodium. The Beyond Burger, 390 milligrams. A pre-made beef patty has 65 to 75 milligrams of sodium, depending on the brand. So if you're eating these burgers solely for their health value, then you may want to reconsider. Jan Dukevich, a Johns Hopkins University fellow, has perhaps a more optimistic view. We caught up with him in Mexico City, where he's researching animal farming. There's a shift change in mainstream opinion about everything from animal ethics and animal welfare to acknowledgement that we're facing a number of major environmental crises, including a climate change crisis. I think this is very exciting because this doesn't have to be an American corporate world-driven movement. This is a food movement. These are tacos al pastor. They're tacos that are normally done with uh, slow roasted pork. But instead of the pork, what they have is seitan, which is wheat protein. I think impossible and beyond, what they're actually doing is they're the tip of the spear that's going to open the food market to more, uh, alter to more meat alternative products, perhaps to cellular agriculture, and just new ways of imagining how we eat. Not just how we eat, but also what to call the things we eat. Meat grown in a lab. A preview of where the meat on your dinner plate may be coming from in the Thank future. Oh, you, your mint steak, sir. VitaSigns, in association with BDMS, Bangkok Ducet Medical Services, your trusted healthcare network.